Hello, I'm Sharon Madamba with Metrics, and I'd like to welcome you all to another Metrics Webinar Wednesday. Today's webinar is titled Point of Use Pre-Cleaning, Get the Facts. We wanted to bring you a webinar focused on point of use pre-cleaning, specifically because this is a topic that's talked about frequently and something that we understand is very highly scrutinized by the Joint Commission. We wanted to offer some facts on point of use pre-cleaning, along with some best practices and recommendations. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to join us today and every Metrics Webinar Wednesday. Please see our website, metrics.com, for more info on upcoming webinar topics and to register. Some notes for those of you joining us on this live session. This presentation is being recorded and a link to view the recording will be sent out via email. Uh, your audience audio is muted, but you may submit questions during the webinar using the chat function. With that, let's get started. Some of you who've, uh, who joined us may not be familiar with metrics. So I wanted to take time and um, take the opportunity to share our belief, vision, and mission as we believe it aligns with what each of you in attendance also work toward each day. So here at Metrics, we believe that no one should ever have to fight for their health over an infection they didn't have when they entered a healthcare facility. So for example, it's not acceptable to undergo a routine colonoscopy and contract C. diff because of improper scope reprocessing. Each day, the Metrics team works towards making our vision of a world without any preventable healthcare-associated infections a reality. We know it's a difficult goal, but it's something we consistently work toward. And we work toward it by living our mission, which is to work tirelessly to support healthcare professionals in the fight against HAIs, so that you can put your time, energy, and focus on what is always the most important thing, getting the patient better. The three pillars of our mission are our people, the team here at Metrics that leads with integrity and knowledge, our quality metrics products built from customer needs, and our partnerships. And that's partnerships with people like yourselves in the audience who are taking the time to learn more about how we can help in the fight against HAIs. Taking a look at what you'll learn today, we're gonna to go over the impact of healthcare associated infections or HAIs, the importance of point of use, POU, pre-cleaning. We'll talk about some common best practices for point of use pre-cleaning, and we'll end with some resources. What you're seeing now is an infographic that does a really great job of helping visualize the current state of HAIs in the United States. This data comes from the CDC and some of the numbers are quite scary. If you're admitted to a hospital, you have a 5% chance of contracting an HAI. It's a staggering number. If you do contract an HAI, the length of your hospital stay can increase by as much as 17.6 days. The number of deaths in the U.S. from HAIs alone is around 99,000 annually. That doesn't even include the areas of the world where you can't collect data. This is just the United States. Taking a look at surgical site infections specifically, surgical site infections, or SSIs, are a type of healthcare-associated infection. In 2014, there were 157,500 SSIs associated with inpatient services in the United States. This is particularly important to us and relevant for this webinar because although there can be many causes for SSIs, improperly cleaned instrumentation can be a big contributing factor. SSIs are the most costly of all HAIs. In the US alone, SSIs generate an annual cost of $3.3 billion. So not only is there direct impact to the patient and impact to your healthcare facility's reputation, there's also this huge dollar figure to consider, which can greatly impact your operations. We looked at HAIs, we're looking now at SSIs. Given all these facts and figures, I think we can agree that this is a problem that needs some attention. As we look for ways to eliminate HAIs and SSIs, we can see that pre-cleaning 
can be a big piece of the puzzle. Why is pre-cleaning important? The first and foremost reason is patient safety. Patient safety is top priority for everyone. Patient safety is the reason we sterilize our instruments. Pre-cleaning is always going to be that first step in the disinfection or sterilization process. The second reason why pre-cleaning is important is compliance. The CDC and FDA emphasize the importance of proper processing of reusable medical devices. The Joint Commission has Infection Control Standard IC020201 to govern the pre-cleaning process along with decontamination and sterilization. The Joint Commission last year marked this standard as one of their top priorities for surveys, and any facility undergoing a Joint Commission survey this year is likely to have their instrument reprocessing protocols heavily scrutinized. The Joint Commission will want to see processes in place uh, and proper training throughout the facility. They'll want to see the infection preventionists highly involved in sterile processing and involved in staff training of proper pre-cleaning throughout the entire facility as needed. There has been a steady increase of non-compliance over the years, as you can see in this chart, when it comes to this particular infection control standard. But the fact that you're watching this webinar today hopefully means that your facility is doing its part to bring these rates down. That was pre-cleaning in general. Now we want to ask why is point of use pre-cleaning important? First, this is something that is mandated. When you take a look at uh, Centers for Medicaid, Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, CMS advises that pre-cleaning should be performed at the point of use. And it's not just CMS. There are AME standards that indicate that. Joint Commission looks at point of use, and there's info in the CDC guidelines about point of use pre-cleaning as well. So this is something that comes from many resources, but why? The biggest thing is prevention. Point of use pre-cleaning prevents organic soil and debris from drying onto soiled instruments. What you're doing when you pre-clean at the point of use is you're pre-treating these instruments before processing them at a later time. A good analogy to think of is a lasagna tray. You wouldn't leave a dirty lasagna tray on your kitchen counter to dry, no. The cheese and sauce would dry up and harden. That'd be a nightmare to scrub clean. Instead, smart cooks know how to soak their dirty trays in soapy water if they're not going to clean them right after use. That's how you can think of pre-treating your contaminated medical instruments. What happens if you don't pre-treat? If you don't pre-treat, you allow bio-burden to dry onto instruments. And that dried bio-burden can be difficult to remove later and actually hinder the disinfection or sterilization process. Bio-burden left on surfaces prevent disinfectants and sterilizing agents from making contact with surface, surfaces of instruments. That bio burden can effectively protect pathogens on the surface and create a vessel for future patient cross-contamination. Not good. We can take a look at some best and worst case scenarios here. On the left, you can see the impact of improper point of use pre-cleaning uh, and the impact it's had on this instrumentation in the picture. Organic soil and bio burden were allowed to dry onto these instruments and started kind of eating away at these metal surfaces. You can see signs of pitting and corrosion. When we look at the impacts for not using point of use pre-cleaning, patient safety will always be top priority. Lack of point of use pre-cleaning allows debris to harden and become difficult to remove. This prevents high level disinfection and sterilization from being done properly. Improper disinfection and sterilization leads to cross-contamination risk and an increased risk of SSI. On the flip side, there's also the concern for use life of the medical instrumentation. Lack of point of use pre-cleaning allows biofilm to build up on instrumentation. This can lead to pitting and corrosion of the instrument surfaces like we saw in those photos. This shortens the use life of said instruments. So an expensive medical instrument that was supposed to last five years now has to be replaced after six months because it's showing signs of misuse or improper reprocessing.
let's talk about the reprocessing workflow. The very first step is that point of use reprocessing, point of use pre-cleaning. So you're at the use site, maybe you're dealing with surgical instrumentation in the OR, maybe you're in labor and delivery. Point of use pre-cleaning happens wherever the instruments are being used. This is where you'll apply your point of use product and prep the instruments for transportation. From there, the instruments are transported to their processing area. For many facilities, the processing area is the sterile processing department in the basement of the hospital. For others, this is transportation to a third party contractor that takes care of instrument reprocessing for a whole system of hospitals. For some clinics even, transportation means bringing it from the procedure room to the processing room to two doors down. Whatever processing area means for your facility, the first thing that should be done at this processing area is cleaning preparation. This can be done manually at a sink or this can involve an automated washer. Next step in the workflow after cleaning is inspection which also involves packaging the items for either sterilization or preparing for terminal high-level disinfection, depending on the device classification. The reprocessing workflow ends at storage, making sure instruments are stored appropriately for future use. Now we wanna go into common pre-cleaning products and best practices for each of these. We're going to cover foams and gels, sponges, and disinfectant wipes. Starting with foams and gels, let's talk about best practice for using an enzymatic foam or gel at point of use. First, you wanna gather the soiled instruments for decontamination. Most often, so, most often soiled items meant for reprocessing are placed in a bin or deep tray that has a matching lid. Next, you'll spray pre-cleaner, the enzymatic foam or gel, directly onto the instruments. Be sure to spray enough foam or gel such that all the instrument surfaces are well covered. Be aware of the product manufacturers for use and recommendations as different products may have special instructions for application. You may need to reapply the foam or gel in order to keep instruments moist until further processing can be done. Lastly, prior to any further processing, the foam or gel should be rinsed off the instruments hopefully taking the majority of bio burden away with it. Empower foam pictured here is our metrics point of use enzymatic spray. Empower foam is a dual enzymatic foaming spray ready to use requiring no dilution. Empower foam helps hospitals comply with the Joint Commission's requirement of keeping instruments wet until it reaches the processing area. It's ideal for use in operating rooms at point of use, in sterile processing immediately at receipt, or in other departments where instrument cleaning isn't immediately available. Next, we'll talk about enzymatic sponge best practice. First step when using an enzymatic sponge is to remove the sponge from its packaging and squeeze to the point of foam. Next, you'll wanna immerse the sponge in water and begin scrubbing instruments. It's important to review the manufacturer's instructions for use, as some have recommend, recommended contact times, usually a minimum of two to five minutes. Visually inspect the instrument for cleanliness, paying particular attention to indents or crevices where debris may be hiding. Lastly, rinse the instruments thoroughly with warm water. Metrosponge by Metrics is our enzymatic sponge. Met Metrosponge is used to pre-clean critical or semi-critical medical devices prior to terminal sterilization or terminal high-level disinfection, respectively. Metrosponge is ready to use. It's pre-saturated with a dual enzymatic solution, and its cylindrical shape and lengthwise opening easily forms around cylindrical instruments and devices. This makes for easy and simplified pre-cleaning of such devices. Metrosponge helps hospitals comply with that Joint Commission standard IC020201, governing device reprocessing.
The last pre-cleaning product we want to cover is disinfecting wipes. Some medical device manufacturers recommend use of a disinfecting wipe to remove gross debris prior to reprocessing. This is a type of pre-cleaning that can vary from device to device, so it's important to review IFUs for procedural instructions. What you're looking at here is an example where wiping is the recommended pre-cleaning step for the scope in the drawing. You'll see disinfecting wipes commonly recommended in the reprocessing instructions for ultrasound, ultrasound probes too. Ultrasound probe IFUs often recommend use of a disinfecting wipe to pre-clean prior to terminal high-level disinfection. Metrics product Cavi Wipes 1 is a disinfectant wipe that can be used at point of use to remove gross filth and heavy soil loads. You can remove gross debris with a Cavi Wipes 1 before further scrubbing and cleaning with Metro Sponge. Or you can use Cavi Wipes 1 to disinfect a device that has already been pre-cleaned with Metro Sponge. Again, the exact protocol will depend on the medical device manufacturer. Wipes are very easy to use. Best practice when using Cavi Wipes 1 is to dispense the towelette from the canister, wipe the instrument, and discard the single-use towelette. How can metrics best help you in your point of use pre-cleaning journey? It's been mentioned throughout the presentation that reprocessing is a hot topic for the Joint Commission in particular. We mentioned how they'll be heavily scrutinizing facility reprocessing protocols and staff training. After today's webinar, we'll be sending you a PDF copy of the Joint Commission Booster Pack, which contains info about the infection control standards that we talked about today to help you ensure the right protocols are in place in your facility. We also have great wall charts orderable through metrics, including this pre-cleaning wall chart shown here that lays out the information we talked about today in a nice visual that you can hang up in your facility to promote staff education. They're actually laminated, so you can wipe them down with a disinfectant. We also have competency exams that you can use to test the knowledge of your staff when you're using metrics point of use products. And you can have these as evidence of your ongoing staff training and education. Remember that we're here as your partners in this and can provide help with in-services and education whenever you're using our products. Lastly, since we talked about Joint Commission reprocessing standards, I also want to take this time to let you know about another webinar we have available on demand at metrics.com. It's entitled High Level Disinfection Strategies for Your Next Survey. This is a CE accredited webinar that you can find on the education page of our website, metrics.com. That concludes our point of use pre cleaning get the facts webinar. Now we're going to take a look at the questions we've received through the chat function. And please feel free to continue to ask questions at this time. I have my colleague Jessica Williams on the line and she'll be reading through these questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Hi, everybody. Thank you for attending our webinar today. I do see one question in the chat box. Um, unfortunately, we're having some sound issues, so we will. Um, I will ask the question, and if we're able to respond, we will. Otherwise, we will follow up with an email afterwards. Uh, the question is, does the technique change with final exam tables? And it looks like that is the only question we have received. So we will follow up um, to the asker with the answer on this question post webinar. Thank you all for joining and have a great day.